this is part three in the series to get you guys up and running to do some like basic machine learning. So the statistics part is somewhat of a review of Pandas, but with some some stuff we didn't cover last time we were talking together. A little bit about hypothesis testing. You'll see pretty much the same if you were doing it in R, just the syntax is a bit different. Linear, linear modeling, which is very different. Uh, and then last, we'll do some plotting with Seaborn. It's it's one of the many packages you can plot with, but it's, it's they, they have some good functionality. Uh, so this session pretty much follows this set statistics in Python from the side link here. So it's a little different, but in general, you can can follow light later if you, you miss anything. And I did like, we, in the Python world, we talk a lot about why are you doing statistics in Python? Just do it in R. Uh, but there are some reasons to do it. And most of that has to do with just like be putting it, integrating it into a pipeline. Like, especially if you want to integrate it in a Python pipeline that has both uh, bash and then a mix of stuff, being able to just top, pop in uh, uh, statistics into your your pipeline python is is pretty useful for that so we're probably just going to get started okay, i'm gonna do just load the pandas and when i was doing this i found that you could download files straight from the web without having to load them download them to your computer so if you put in the path of anything that is like CVS, you see something in like GitHub, just do uh, pandas read and then you can play around with it. For this particular thing, you need to separate with uh, the colon. And gets right in and you didn't have to waste space on your computer. And we just want to take a look at it. Uh, anyone, I always look at the head to see what the, the, the how long it is, how much data it is. The info, nice to see the data types object is kind of like character, uh, a category, but all can something. And then from there, uh, we can also do something similar uh, using NumPy, which uh, to make arrays. So if you think about the data frame in, in the pandas as a bunch of arrays in a dictionary, because that's pretty much what you're doing. You can do your add it in as a dictionary, and then you don't have to do anything special, and then you have your your data here. So this is useful when you're doing making your own simulated data. And what is nice is that the pandas has a boatload of different ways of importing data. Some of the things I highlight here is just like HTML, the Excel I've used, the Parquet for huge, huge amounts of data. It has something there. I did not know it had SAS, CPAS, and SQL, but it has uh, inherit ability without having to download another library. Sometimes you'll need to download a handful of extra stuff, but it'll tell you. So if you're missing XML library, just do pip install and you're fine. And then the documentation, if you want to go to a pandas and look at every last thing it has, and it has a nice tutorial on how to use it too. I've added that here for people's viewing, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so now we're getting back. And then this is just me subsetting the, the data to look at the mean, just kind of getting an idea what this intelligent data or whatever is, some old data. Uh, and here we're using group by, and this is just another way of using group by as a generator. If it's may Spain function is to create a generator, and because it creates a generator, you can loop through it. And by doing that, you can print both the gender, gender which is the thing you're going through each each bit here, and then the the value, and then you're taking the mean, which is pretty much the same thing as the second one here, a except you're only looking at this one bit here, or you're only doing it here. 
and then what is nice is that you don't have to download extra uh in, you don't have to import extra libraries if you just put box plot on your generator and you can select the columns of interest you can make yourself a little plot here which is nice because uh, if you just want to kind of visualize what it looks like in, in a very quick and dirty plot you can do that so, so we're just going to go more in depth say you want to use the uh plotting bit here. It's part of Pandas, but if I don't want to want, want to write PD plotting over and over again, I just import it as plotting just to make it easier to, to write. Here's a good number of examples if you want to. I find this was somewhat gave me some similars, not very limited to that GG pairs. Just so you can see. So you've got uh, the diagonal is a KDM. You can also do a diagonal of histogram, but you've got color, you've got the each one and similar to that pairs where you're looking at pairwise. And then the histogram, when it's looking at each uh, plotting itself. And then you can subset the data right in the data frame using some of the techniques we talked about before. And look at control the figure size. So if you want this to be huge, say we want it 12, 12 by 12, it'll plot 12 by 12, and you guys can really see that. I, especially with my with old eyes like mine, I can really get a look and you can change colors and stuff like that too. Here's an interesting one. So I was like, well, we know there's gender and I want to look at it, but from a gender lens. You can add the color here, and it requires binary. So you see this huge kind of code here. That is changing your object here, which was probably a string or something, into a category, and then changing it into a code. So it goes from being So it goes from being this array of female, male, 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 female to zero being female and uh, one being male. And it'll do this by like order, alphabetical order. So if you're ever wondering what the zero is, it's it's going to be whatever comes in the first library uh, alphabet. For for that, it's female. And then and then as long as you're using a code, so binary system or sometimes it doesn't have to be binary it just needs to be a numeric then you can plot it and you can put these colors here and if you want to see the density you just do it see plot here but i thought that was pretty cool uh to get some stuff that you might be familiar with with r if you're just kind of doing a quick blast now, if we go into actually doing some statistical tests, now we're done data manipulations bit. Uh, it, it's not so simple as in the built-in stuff at R. You load R, you can go, go wild with statistics. You're, you're in Python, you need to <laughs> actually install the statistics module, and there's several. We're going to do two. Uh, for now, it's scan SciPy. Uh, the SciPy is a universe, and you'll see NumPy and Pandas are part of that universe with SciPy, and this is more for the interaction. Uh, we, we do use MATLAB plot for a lot of imaging, and I have not yet needed to use SimPy, but I don't do heavy math. And uh, there's a nice, very detailed tutorial, like if you are going to go buck wild or you have some questions. Like you want to do a Fourier transformation, you want to do signal processing. You, they have very good details explaining what it is, and then examples. And what I tell my undergrad is to just grab the example, put it in your text, and then see what it does. And then from there, you can uh, you can you can work with it from there.
you can edit your code to get what you're trying to get at. Very detailed, nice documentation. Uh, and then if you just want to know the list that you can do with sci-fi, it gives you, like, if you want to do something, you know the thing in R, but you just have no idea what to do for, for Python, just kind of go to one of these lists. I normally just put it in Google and say Python, but you can have a full list of the things it can do, discrete distribution, summary statistics, describe things, t-means, frequency stuff, uh, the correlation. So there's Pearson R, literally it's Pearson implemented from the R and then Spearman R, the same thing, it's Spearman, but implemented from R into Python. Lin regressions, all these types of C tests, statistical tests, stuff like that. And a good descriptions of how to how it works, and what we knew, description of what it is, you can read up about it. It won't give you like a tutorial in this, you have to go to the tutorial page, but at least it's a nice list and you can figure out exactly what you're trying to do. Fisher's exact, interesting thoughts, and then even more stuff. So we're just gonna go right in to just the basic T test. So this is T1 sample with this data here and it's super significant, that's pretty cool. Uh, say you wanna subset and do a two sample T test, you can, uh, which is normally what we're doing, like control and schizophrenia. You'll subset it and this is a way, one way to subset it in the male and female and then you can just run it. And, and as long as the, it should work regardless of the sizes. And then there's a p-value, no real difference. T-statistic, quite simple. Just remember that if you're, to, to add the dot for your leading and input in the output, you're good to go. For the non can you get um, yeah. the coefficient and the, the variance, the standard deviation? For the t-test? Yeah, yeah. Like, so no, for example, we'll get the, um, I mean, this, the, here you're getting the t-statistic, right? But that t-statistic is calculated from the coefficient and um, and it's um, the standard deviation, right? So I don't know if you yeah. get two, right? In case you, in case you wanted them, right? Maybe you don't need them, but maybe if you wanted them. Can you get them? Uh, the output is exactly what you're going to get. It gives you two outputs, the, the, coefficient, the t-stat, and then the p-value. Otherwise, you're going to have to do different math. Okay, so it's not like, because like in R, like you're getting this like complicated um, object that yeah. the show method, which is the print method for it, um, just print a little bit of information. And like sometimes with R, we'll do like summary, open parenthesis, put our linear regression output model, close parenthesis type of thing. And that gives you a different type of output. Um, so, like, it's not like saving all everything. It's just giving you. It's just basically just saving the t statistic and the p value. Then, yeah, for this, it's very, it's very, very simplistic. And most of the sc scan pie, they output exactly what the you print. That's it. It, mm. it makes it easy for loops because you don't have to go digging around for the variable. Like mm -hmm. if you want the R square, you have to go finding it. And sometimes you'll do some strange things because it's so, so much. If you want like a, a standard deviation, you have to do something else uh, for it. The things that are used to calculate this, you, you have to actually write it in. Uh, but that's not the same for the linear models and the other, that's, I'm gonna say that's very specific to SciPy. There's another stats module, which we're gonna talk about, or we're gonna use anyway for the linear models. And that does give you most of the stuff that like the, the R would give you, where it's giving you a bunch of stuff and you have to go search for the thing you need. Although it's, I don't think it's that difficult to find. It's not that hard to find an R either, but for SciPy, uh, this is, I mean, you're, you're going to get just a handful of results. And it's more simplistic for when you're writing loops and stuff and extracting data. Uh, 
but it does mean if you want the mean, you have to write a function to get the mean. Or if you want some descript descriptive analysis, uh, you have to use something else. Is that that answer? Any other like questions about like doing the statistics, at least with Sky SciPy? I hadn't thought about that. I, I did notice that this, yeah, I did notice that it's like a ridiculous trying to find just like a few variables uh, in R, but if you want those things, yeah, it would be more difficult to come across. And then same stuff, you just really replace the your uh, your method. It's like exactly the same format. You just replace this method, no changing. You're gonna get two values, a t statistic, a p value. Uh, and and I mean that's I mean cut and dry. Uh, so like. I did hear both a non-parametric test, the, uh, the man with me, you, and the t-test uh, on the data, but we didn't check to see if there was any, these were even normal. So like you can do a test for normality and it's rejecting. So it's probably not like, from a normal distribution. And then Shapiro, the one I actually prefer Shapiro also, it's, re it's significant. So these are probably not normally distributed. And so I'm gonna grab this MATLAB matplotlib so it's plots like matlab the pi plot which is the plotting functions and then i'm going to just use the stats module here that the size pi to make a qq plot uh, using uh, mat, uh, the matplotlib you can actually exchange this for whatever your favorite plotting engine is uh, but for simplicity i'm just going to use this and when you're looking at it, you're like, okay, yeah, this is not <laughs> normally distributed. It's got this huge wave here and it's not very close to the line. So if we were running this, you were like, well, you know, you need to use a, a non-parametric version. That's gonna give you a more accurate uh, analysis. So, yeah. When you say that you can replace the plotting engine there, right? Yes. Plot argument. So we could, do, uh, we could use the plotting that you imported from the, the pandas lab plotting that you imported earlier? Uh, let's see. I think I tried to use that one and maybe it didn't want to use that because that was a very specific kind of plot engine. I would say, say you wanted to use Seaborn. Oh, there, okay, there's, there's other things like, okay. And we want to do the exact same thing, but we're going to try to use Seaborn instead. I saw them use something else, and I think you need to say something about that. Yeah, I mean, don't worry about it. Just, yeah, no. I, I got it. It seemed, it seemed really like a really powerful thing, right? I mean, we could get the syntax here uh, later. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure that. I'll figure that bit out later. <laughs> uh, so that that was uh that was going to move to the linear models pretty much it there's like if you if there's something you want to test you just google it you pop it in there and and then you just run it it's actually quite simple you don't really need to do too much especially with the side side pot that's pretty straightforward uh, for like linear models multi-factor stuff an, ANOVA, Analysts of Variance, and then you want to use stats models, which is, that's just where you're going to be able to write your functions, like if you were to write it in R, uh, like x, y equals x. This is a different uh, library, and it's got kind of two, two kinds of things in it. It's got an API, and then it's got formulas, among other things. And so if you want to go into like huge information, it's going to give you a printout that's somewhat similar to some of the like summary printouts you'll see in R. Uh, 
So I've got, I'm just gonna make this random data so we can look to see what it is. And we're gonna use the uh, ordinary least square. So it's not as like user-friendly as R, which is why, I mean, if, if you're gonna use, do something in R, you just wanna do R, then it's probably fine unless you wanna type it in, but it's still straightforward. Uh, so we're going to get both the formula and the, the API. We're gonna get the, the model we're looking for because we don't need the whole thing. And then uh, this is what it looks like in our fake data we made. You put in your formula, you give it the data, just like if you were gonna do R, and then the only difference is then you need to say fit. So you can do this in separate steps, but it's somewhat easier to do if you do it in one step. And then at point, you use summary just like you would in, in R, except now it's gotta be trailing because of the syntax. And then you get a huge thing that's got R squares, that's statistics, properties, coefficient information. I mean, it, it's got pretty much everything. Uh, and then this, it always it gives you this warning to tell you that there's, I mean, it'll tell you the assumption it's making. So if you, you need to make sure you're using your brain when you use the, use the software. This, uh, because we use, we had to use parentheses after summary because um, it's a function? Yes. So it has parameters or there's just a function without any parameters and you still need to use the parentheses anyway? It is a function. So it has, it, it could, okay, we could change the summary in some way, I guess. It's like you're not, you know. Well, let's do model. The, so th this kind of gets into classes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the model, this fit, the OSD is a type of class and its class has a bunch of things you can do with it, mm -hmm. including applying a summary. I wasn't really gonna talk about classes in this series. Mm -hmm. In the thing you can put here, you can have Y name, X name, title, alpha, if you want to change your alpha. So if we say, let's do alpha equals 10%, then you're going to get some, print makes it look prettier, sorry. Uh, and then it changes stuff. Uh, shouldn't change much, actually. Zero. I was hoping it would tell me something of interest. But you can change the alpha, uh, and that'll probably check. It's giving you a different confidence interval for it. Yeah. Okay. Where's the, you see the confidence interval? So, uh, there. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can tell I use this function much, a lot of time. Uh, yes, here. <laughs> uh, and then I don't know what the name X and the name Y is, but it might, you might be able to like customize this output, the printed output, or look for something in particular. Uh, what I found if like, that if you wanted to know what all you can do with this model here, you could just use help, get attributes. I was hoping it would give me some more information. Parameters, columns, yeah, okay. That was not as useful, but either way, uh, it has the parameters and it has your R square. So it'll output your X into the parameters for the intercept, the X, which is just the name, the R square. 
t values. You can use the uh, coefficients to get out the information for a t test. Uh, I find this function not super easy because uh, you do have to either put zeros and ones. And if you're doing more than two variables, then it gets kind of complicated. But it does, it will allow you to, to look at each one separately. Like, so this one would be the intercept, the one and zero, and then the opposite one is your, your x. So you can look at it. Um, and then if we want to move into like using multiple stuff, uh, multiple groups uh, or categorical data, actually, you, just, you really don't need to do much. You're just changing. Now we're using the data. Uh, it gives you the same kind of stuff. It, it automatically kind of sees that it's a categorical data instead of two. Uh, uh, to, to continuous variables. And then what I find useful is you can coerce uh, a variable into a category just by using this capital C. I've seen that uh, in some of the new R uh, packages where you can, if you put the C and you're telling it it's a category, then it will input that into the model. It, it should be the exact same because we're looking at because the gender was already a category. And so for this, I wanted to look at the, these two IQs, and then I wanted to see if there's a, an interaction between the two. So I've just selected this data, and then I've melted it so that it's, uh, I think it's pivot longer, and then rename the, the variables. And then I put it in the, the model and you just say go. So this is kind of what it looks like. And you want to know if there's a, a, a significant interaction. And it is pretty much no. And then you, you'll get the exact same thing if you do an independency test. So it's actually the exact same thing. This p-value is the exact same thing as this. Uh, except this is rounded. Um, yes. I'm not sure I follow the, the interaction part. So, I uh, like for me, it looks like you're asking like is IQ related to type or they're like associated with each other. Um, not... Yeah. Yeah. This was not so much an interaction as in are they associated with each other? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, they called it as a paired t-test. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much looking to see if it's a paired t-test. You can do interaction models, but that's a little bit different. I think you need to add like, well, I, I don't have the other stuff in with the interaction. But yeah, the, I misspoke. This is a paired t-test. Um, for the multi-regression, I this block here is, getting penguin data. So just, as long as you uh, run it, it's it's no big deal. Uh, I didn't want to use irises, so I spent the time to clean the data. And then now we have a penguin DF data fed, and this is the stuff it's in. Uh, for this, if you're just doing multiple regression, you, you just keep putting it in a line, and then it'll do similar stuff. I'm curious, I forgot about interactions. So I'm gonna see if it will do an interaction automatically. So here, you didn't need to add the, the C around sex, right? The capital C to coerce it. Yeah, you don't need to because it, it, it already should be a category. Uh, I see sex is an object, which normally means it's a category. Say if your sex was zero and one, that would be considered an integer. And then you should probably coerce it because you actually just want it to be act like a category. Okay, in our previous data, gender was zeros and ones, then, right? That's why you forced it. Uh, it wasn't. The first model you ran with gender, you added one, right? To make it ones and twos, I think. You added one to get, uh, I can't remember why, but yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So the interaction will work the same way as if you did add, just add a times. It's nice to see they have the same syntax. Yeah, so a lot of the statistics they made for Python, they based it off of R, okay? So uh, as long as like, if you replace this with LN and you remember to add the fit, you pretty much should be fine. Because uh, it's the same syntax, which is why it's like, you know, I, I, I feel like you got, if you're good with R, you should have no trouble to translate it. You just have to remember that you have to input the type of linear model you want to do. Uh, so it's not just LM and assume. I'm going to move this up. Not LMS, and this is me cleaning the data. The tidyverse is just underscore drop in A, and I'm doing it in, in place because it doesn't have too much tolerance. The, the scatter plot has no tolerance at all for NA data. It will give you an error if you want to color it, and I do want to color it. Here, what I did was I made a series with the categorical. I made this a series of categorical data. So I don't have to say dot cat. Uh, I feel like I should explain this a little bit. So like PD, you can make a categorical data. And then I can also, and it says category because it's a categorical data. And then it tells you the categories, just like factor level, it'll tell you the factor levels. Or uh, you can just grab it from the data frame. Same thing. Uh, it's in a different format. This is not a series, really. Uh, While well, this is a, a series, this is still a data frame, so you got to be careful. And then this is me just plotting it again, and you can see the groups do pretty. Uh, these groups pretty much separate really well with the species. Oh, look at that. Pretty nice. Uh, and then you can do the same thing with uh, sex. Uh, I, just a reminder. Some of these are somewhat, you can see they're like somewhat different, uh, but not as clear as the species. Hey, KJ, so, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when you were printing the categories a little couple of lines up, why did you have the zero through five? Uh, because I didn't want to do the whole thing. If oh, that's like heading the first five. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Depending on your uh, I, the uh, interface you're using, uh, sometimes it will literally print everything. Yeah. And that I go scroll down. You're like, I didn't mean to do this. Uh, so yeah. Okay. I haven't habit of just putting this in but this is it's on this notebook thing that's kind of like jupiter so it will cut it off awesome. the screen will cut it off, so. thank you no problem and then th we were looking at that model before i want to just look at the data because we have all these things that says there's an interaction uh the body mass seems to be significant and there's mat this is sex body mass and sex are all in here that's somewhat associated with flipper length things that you that make sense and you can see species and then we hop on to fil flipper length and then sex and flipper length and then we just want to look at the parameters actually and then you could see them here and the r square is quite high 
uh, we'll probably uh, we will come back to this uh, in the breakout section in for for this bit and maybe also in the visualization. So that's kind of the the bit for multi regression. It's pretty much similar syntax. Uh, the only differences are just like the beginning bits here and then the fit. So ANOVA, this is using the stats models in stats and then ANOVA LM, I do believe it's based off of the R, R function. If you had done LM and then ANOVA, you do, I think in R they use type one. So if you wanna make sure you're getting the same thing, you just put type one. And you should, this should be the same output as if, if you had done it with R. It's a bit of a debate about the notes about which type to use. It, and I, I'm not, I'm not about that life. So unless you guys really are into it, I'm good. Um, so same kind of problem. First thing you did was you did the linear model, just like you did in R, and then you put it into ANOVA. So we're taking that same model, putting that into ANOVA, and then getting the output the same you would get it with type one. It's the exact same one you would get with, with R. And then say we wanted to say, well, it looks like there's some type of core. wanted to look for correlations here. We can just use a Spearman R and it, Spearman based off of the R. And yeah, it looks like a decent correlation. A pretty good correlation, very significant p value. And then the man Whitney, if we're looking at sex, because we're doing a categorical, also quite uh, significant. And then just so we can look to see if the data is pretty even, because I saw this big sex difference. So there's like maybe there's a difference in the number of, of individuals, but it's actually quite even within the uh, the categories so so with that I'll, I'll if i have any additional questions about anova you know i'm going to move on to the additional visual visualization with seaborn um in anova yes. in R, sometimes you can give it multiple models can you do something like that here uh you mean so like I know in R, if you just give it one model, it will like show you the coefficients of that model. But if yes. you give it nested models, it will show you the difference in coefficients between model one versus model two, etc. Oh, I have never done that before. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, just I mean, we can look at that later. I was if you knew it, that, yeah, on the top of your head. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've never done that before in R or Python, so it's possible. And it also might not work. Uh, it's really only expecting one model. Yeah. If you gave it a dictionary, you could probably loop, but uh, yeah, I'd have to. It's kind of like if we, if, we if we abstract the question in R, there's the ellipsis argument, the triple dot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I don't know if there's an ellipsis argument in Python for like there might be some functions where you can give it an unlimited amount of objects, like C by. Is we have we call it k words, so it's the arguments. You do two dots and arguments, and this is an unlimited number. It's based it, like it doesn't even tell you. It's just like and you can put a bunch of different stuff. Depending, okay. it works. Some of it doesn't. All right. Uh, All right. So that's a like way we okay. I'm checking that. Yeah. There is some limitations, but in general, this is like your and a bunch of arguments that we haven't included, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, we saw these kind of high uh, correlations, so this is pretty much just plotting them. So the pair plot is going to do the same thing, similar thing as the scatter matrix.
and uh, and it's gonna attempt to fit a linear model because I think we said what kind we wanted, we won't progress. Some of these are pretty good. Some of these are like, this is clearly two different populations. To, to get these different, to see if you can cluster these different populations, you just put Q and that's the same thing as color if you're doing like a ggplot thing. And then the variable you want to color it on. I'm pretty sure the species will even it out. And then you can see some of these are much better now. Uh, you can see the linear regression. These guys are overlapping. This was pretty, pretty, pretty linear to begin with. And then you can do individual plots with the LM plot instead of the pair plot. And this way you give it the Y, you give it the X, and then the data. And then here you go, you get plotting it individually. Doing it by adding that hue again uh, to get the colors to separate. And then I've just done the same thing, except instead of uh, build length, we're looking at the mass body, body mass. And then there's a very slight difference, probably not significant. And then I, I, it looks like there might be different slopes for the different species of penguin. And like these ginto are huge, uh, just huge. All right, uh, so I had a, a set of uh, questions that would probably take the rest of the time that we could work to get to work on together or in small groups. Uh, and this is just a helper. So you know what to use to subset your stuff, uh, specifically if you're trying to get the Ginto penguins.